All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, what's happening? What's happening, everyone? Peace to the gods. I'm amped up. Had me a pregame ritual just before I came on the air. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let me get a mic check first and foremost before we begin, because we got a real good show lined up for you today. You're going to learn something today. You're going to learn today. You're going to learn today. I got a real good video review for you. Peace, peace, peace all. Peace all. What's happening? What's happening? Peace. Peace, 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 peace. All right, all right, all right. Loud and clear. Okay, we on. Sounds clear. Okay, that's good. That's good. I appreciate that. All right, so today I got a video review. I kind of did a cursory overview of this video. I didn't look at it all the way through because I like, this is a long one. And it's kind of one that I think that will help a lot of people who are attempting to go into court and represent themselves using this information. As well as, you know, I think that this woman, um, deserves some recognition for the attempt, for the effort that she put in in this particular case. And I think that this particular video is rife with information that can show you the pitfalls that you can encounter whenever you attempt to do information like this. So I like this, I like this video a lot. Let's get the likes up to 100. Somebody said, oh Yusuf, you lost credibility because you, you be asking for likes. No, sometimes I just remind people to like because you can just as easily, they, they still calculate the dislikes too. And so I take the dislikes into consideration because if the dislikes are, are higher than they normally are, then I know I probably presented something that wasn't too favorable to the people or maybe it touched on a lot of people's nerves. I don't know. But a lot of times it's around, I like people to remind me to put in a like because I'm a content creator and I always make sure that anyone's content that I look at and I like it, I make sure I like it because I'm not gonna ask for something that I don't give, okay, that I don't give. So I wanna make sure that that's clear first and foremost. So let's get the likes up to 100 so we can begin. I wanna appreciate James Ross for the nine to the ninth power of nine. Thank you for the donation, my brother. I appreciate it. I appreciate all donations that I get. Thank you for the hearts and emojis and all that. I don't get to catch you live often, but I'm here for it today. Teach! Oh, you gonna catch it today. All my shows be hot, man. You ought to know that. All my shows gonna be hot, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring you that fire. Come over here and bring you that fire. And I got some fire for you today. I'm gonna point out all the little nuances in a lot of these uh, procedures. And this is a very, very good um, case to review. It's a very good case to review. Thank you for the 4.99 piece, Houston Vale. I hope you open up for others' questions after the video. Can't wait to see the video though. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do a little bit of that. All right, since you asked, I don't have any problem doing that. I'll open it up for a little. But this is a long video though, bro. It's a long video, all right? And it, but it's rife with a lot of motherfucking shit that we need to know. I got to stop cussing so much because everybody say I'm getting too big to cuss. What y'all think? I just like talking like that shit, you know? It's like, what are you talking? What do you want me to change the way I talk and shit? Nah, this is why I talk. You know, you meet me, I don't motherfucking change up for a nigga. <laughs> it's like, this is how I talk, okay? So... The cold sounds, good thing I slept all day. Can you wrap a case to us? I can't even wrap no case, brah. I got you, I got you too, all right? I got you too. Big L, 499, okay, I appreciate it, bruh. Okay, let's get to it. The likes at 103, so we're gonna begin. Now this case is an individual, this is a female, this is a, this is a European uh, lady. She's very nice with it. I like her energy though. I like, you know, She's a kindred spirit. I like her love. But then again, I also have to caution myself because I want to make sure that these aren't like staged type videos because I feel like this video is a message too, that they're attempting to send a message to us. 
by how what say, things that the judge says during the course of this proceeding. I think he's trying to send a message like, okay, we're going to put a video out here and let y'all know what it is. Because he's going to talk about like contempt. He's going to explain what civil and criminal contempt is. Because, you know, they'll charge you contempt. When we came back, okay, is that going to be civil or criminal contempt? But let me tell you something. It doesn't matter how they posture themselves. You can't get over the truth, man. Truth is truth. I hope your judge listening to me and what I'm about to say to you. Truth is the truth. All you can do is hope you can fool a lot of people. That's all you can do. Because once people's eyes are open, they will never be shut. They will never be shut. Once people's eyes are open. So understand that. You know what I'm saying? So... All right, so let's look and see, am I telling the truth? Am I misleading the people, as they like to say? You know, you have a lot of attorneys and, uh, and trolls out there that say I'm misleading the people, that I'm giving false information, that I'm ignorant of the law, that I don't know what I'm talking about. I can accept that, you know, from an inferior mind who only thinks that they're intelligent based off of the fact that they've received some sort of, um, you know, uh, uh, confirmation from you know somebody in the public like a university or something like that I'm not impressed I'm not impressed because the information I'm on is esoteric in nature in nature it's on a much higher level I'm not impressed with the information that you got I'm not impressed with it <laughs> I'm just not impressed <laughs> but we're gonna look at we're gonna look at the things that you say and we're gonna see if you speak truth See, that's the thing that I think that is missing. Or do you speak truth? Do you speak truth? That's all I'm looking for. If you speak truth. And you can't tell me you speak truth when I do my own investigation and I research this information and it's counter to what you're telling me. Only conclusion that I can arrive at is that you think I'm stupid. And that's insulting, especially coming from an inferior intellect such as yourself. So let's get to it tonight. Let's see what we got. I'm going to crank it up. Let's crank up the engines. And let's see what we got. Good afternoon. We are in the 53rd Circuit Court for the County of Sheboygan. I'm sorry, we are actually in the 89th District Court. That's this case is an 89th District Court case. Uh, we're conducting a hearing in the Circuit Court room. <clears throat> it's being uh, clerked from the 89th District Court room that has participated by video conference technology into the hearing. And uh, I am providing public access both in the courtroom and also <clears throat> online. Uh, so for that reason, uh, we request that nobody would try to uh, record or photograph anything during the hearing as that can be disruptive to the proceeding. So we'll call the matter in the matter of contempt of Beth Michelle Bridgman filed. It's filed under the case of People's State of Michigan uh, versus Flores filed 23-8. Okay, I just want to interject right here that when he was announcing this is going to be available for you and on the internet and all, all that, that's what one of the first flags that made me think that it was staged or that at least that it was a message. I, we're going to send a message to all these sovereign citizens. So this is why I'm reviewing this case because I think this is a message that is being sent to us. You know, hey, we're going to make this publicly available to everybody. Okay, we want y'all to see what we're about to do in here today. That's what I got from that, you know. So let's just let's just see what they got to say. I'm, you know, I'm I'm interested in hearing the message. I really am. I want to see is the message coherent? Is it truthful? Is it in accord with the uh, God's will? You know, I want to know all of that. I'm interested. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Six eight S D. So, Ms. Bridgman, if you want to come forward to the table. I'm unable to do that. <clears throat> I don't have a license to practice law in the bar arena and in the water. I am a woman on the land. 
under the law of the land and under the one true God. I'm a living soul. And okay, I mean, you're offered a contract with Beth Michelle Bridgman in all caps. That's I'm not that person. Anybody else in this room that person? Hang on. Okay, I love her energy, but I don't love her approach. You know, she seems like she's at the stage where she's trying to prove to the people that she's not afraid of them, which that's okay because we all go through that stage. I went through that stage too. I'm in that stage where I'm, I'm going to prove to you people I'm not afraid of any of you. I will say what needs to be said. That is a necessary stage that you have to go through. It's a necessary stage. You have to show them you're not afraid of them. You got to show them you're not afraid of them. However, the approach is something that I would tend to question because she's making a lot of conclusions. I'm not that name. That argument hasn't worked for a very long time. Yeah, the, the, no, the I'm not that name arguments. I'm a real living soul up on the land. That's kind of that kind of like that gives you a lot of sovereign citizen type of feel to it when you could just as easily put in an affidavit of non corporate existence. You know, just do something like that. Don't make it sound so sovereignty, you know, because they're going to be quick to label you that. And, you know, the, the skill, I think, in this is being able to present um, your position without sounding sovereign citizenry, you know, that without, without doing that, because they got a concern about alerting the public and the public is watching that and they go, all they got to do, all they're going to attempt to do is try to clown you and make you look stupid in the public. When you, you know, when you, when you're just overt with your presentation. So try to give them a little, um, a little leeway. And then, and then if they don't honor that, then bust their ass, you know, bust their ass in. You're like, okay, you, you playing games. You think I'm stupid. Let me ask you a few questions. I got a few questions for you. Okay. First and foremost, they constitutional questions. And it is my understanding that you took an oath to uphold the constitution because they're going to make it give you the feel like, the Constitution don't have anything to do with this. And we're going to see this and some of the examples that are in this video. Let's continue. Okay. So, Ms. Ms. Bridgman, um, you're correct that the bar in the courtroom, uh, people have to be licensed attorneys to cross the bar to represent other people. Uh, of course, people can and do, as you have, represented yourself on this side of the bar. <clears throat> so you're welcome to sit at the table there, which would perhaps be more comfortable for you. If you would prefer to proceed from where you're standing or sitting, that's fine with me as well. Do you have a preference then? Uh, I'd like to stay right here. Okay, uh, that's my great. Honor. Um, I think the first matter I need to address is that. Um, I have a copy of your sworn oath here, and it's- That's not relevant for today. So Ms. Bridge, when you filed a motion for me to recuse myself, I'm gonna deny that motion. It didn't present any basis for recusal. So that motion is denied. And we're here for a contempt hearing, uh, you, which you've been arraigned on for your contempt for interference. I had to pause this part right here because this is something that is worth mentioning. Anytime you put in a motion, you're asking for a benefit from the court. It's a request. If we're here to enforce our rights, you can demand your rights. You can't dem demand request. Okay, so you're looking for a benefit from the court. All right, so be, you know, really we were taught that you don't even put in any motions whatsoever because we're here to enforce what rights, but rights have to be in the form of a contract, which is why you do a secure party process and an administrative process is also so you can have some sort of agreement when you come into the court that you can enforce in an equity situation. Okay. Cause the equity is what we are to be judged under. Cause that's what God judges us under equity, fairness, impartiality, and even handed dealing. But they want to take you into some sort of corporate venue and subject you wholeheartedly to some sort of um, corporate type of policy. And the people that are engaging in it, I do have to question their um, character. You know, some cold-hearted individuals. I'm beginning to wonder if some of them are sell out. You know, some of them are even extraterrestrials. That's something that I think that people need to entertain. Don't just cast that thought out of your mind. Allow that thought. 
to, to, to lodge in the back of your mind and keep it there because the truth is stranger than fiction. Don't never forget that. All right, so let's look at, uh, let's, let's continue to look at this. Okay, let's continue to look at this. What else he got to say? During the court process and the unauthorized practice of law and then failing to attend. <clears throat> This is true. Uh, so, Ms. Miller, any opening statements? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I will share with you the evidence that uh, Ms. Bridgman engaged in the unauthorized practice of law um, that is contrary to MCL 600.916. Um, she further prevented uh, the defendant in the underlying case from meeting with his um, MDR, MIDC attorney prior to his arraignment on. November 30th, 2023, and she also failed to appear for her show cause on uh, December 20th, 2023, 11 a.m. Are you, do you wish any witnesses to custard? Um, I have to talk about this part because, you know, she's reading from a piece of paper and that's what adds to, you know, my belief that it is something that is scripted. You know, when I look at things like that, she's reading, look like she's reading from a piece of paper. And it also feels like she's nervous. One of the things that you're going to pick up, because when you do things like this, you have to use your third senses. You have to be in tune with your, your higher senses. The higher senses is clairvoyance, clairvoyance telepathy, psychometry, and um, what is the last one? Um, psychometry, telepathy, clairvoyance, and intuition. Your intuition is, is another sense. It's like a sixth sense. And the intuition means the quick realization of truth. So sometimes intuitively, when they talk and you will, you will sense the truth. And you got to you learn to control yourself and abide by that because everything that comes out of that is trying to make you doubt the truth that you've just been told. So that's why wisdom is with, the, is with the older people because the older people know the wisdom of not paying attention to our first thought. We didn't see the mistakes that we've made. So when we try to talk to a younger person and tell them that, look, always listen to that first thought. Your first mind is going to tell you the truth. But then, you know, you try to doubt yourself and, or try to give somebody the benefit of a doubt and end up in a bad situation when... When you get older, what wisdom is, is when you learn to pay attention to your intuition. Because you've already been instilled a default mechanism to allow you to sense truth when you hear it. And those are the things that they attempt to discount in proceedings like this. They try to make you look stupid as if you don't understand what's really going on. And the passive observer, the individual who is a layman, who doesn't, who's not familiar with any of this, but just coming in off the street and saying, look, those crazy sovereign citizens on there talking about, hey, I'm a real living soul, I'm on the land. It sounds crazy. We know it sounds crazy, but it only sounds crazy because you're ignorant. When you, when, you, when, when you educate yourself about the subject matter, it will make sense. And don't allow them to educate you because when they try to explain it to you, it's like they're explaining something to a third grader. They try to make it sound stupid. All right, so let's continue. Let's see what we got. What are they talking about? I don't believe so. Okay, Ms. Bridgman, uh, now's the time you can make your opening statement to me, but first, um, do you wish to have any witnesses that will be presented sequestered, meaning that they have to leave the courtroom and be instructed I'm not to watch the contracted with this, <clears throat> this uh, hearing, this administrative hearing cannot be, <clears throat> I cannot be adulterous to my own oath of office. I'm going to assume that you're rejecting my under request an authority. for sequestration orders and no sequestration orders center. So go ahead with your opening statement.
One of the things that she's going to be talking about during the course of these proceedings is that she has her own oath of office. What I'm interested in, ma'am, if you are watching this, is that you did you put your oath of office into evidence and then make it a part of the record? So, Jan, I have something I'd like to make a part of a record. And then read your oath of office into the record. You know, if this is evidence, because you say you don't want to adulterate yourself against your own oath of office. And I get it. I get what you're saying. You're trying to meet him on equal footing and he's not. And this is an example of railroading, which is one of the reasons I wanted to play this video, because I wanted all the followers of this information to be able to see how they will railroad you, how they will run over you. You can get ran over because they'll say, well, something doesn't work. I haven't seen that work before. Well, I want to show you the example of why it does not work. Examples of it because you're dealing with dishonorable individuals. But also, you're also dealing with individuals who don't right quite make their presentation in a way that is palatable to the court, that's palatable to the appetite of the public without them looking at you and thinking that you're some sort of, you know, loon <laughs> or something like that. This is the, th this is the tightrope that we're walking. This is the balancing act that we're engaged in. This is the conundrum that you got to deal with. How am I going to be able to present myself in my sovereign capacity without looking like a fool? When so many onlookers are ignorant. Let's continue. Let's look at this. Let's see what we can get from this. Law is... Um must be a contract. In the absence of in a valid contract, there is no law, period, which might be part of the problem that we have here. Now, mm -hmm. I okay. This was kind of cringe for me, what she tried to do, because she's making a conclusion. We need a contract in an admiralty jurisdiction. We haven't established that we have an admiralty jurisdiction, ma'am. You're making a conclusion of law without, you know, questioning anything. You know, you haven't asked these people what jurisdiction they're operating under. That's why you always come in. Well, your honor, I have a question for you. Is this a civil or criminal action? Then we're going to get an answer to that. Then we're going to move to the next question. That is pursuant to the Constitution. This is where you put their back up against the wall. This is where you start monitoring their body language and things like that because you didn't smack their ass with the Constitution and they all swore an oath to uphold the Constitution. So now we are measuring, we are monitoring, monitoring whether or not they are operating pursuant to that oath that they made to the Constitution because if they're not, then they're traitors to that document. And we all know what happens to traitors. Or... They can explain how they are honoring the Constitution and reveal to us the true jurisdiction the court is operating under. But just to dismiss it as some sort of kook or some sort of loon is disrespectful to the constituency, uh, constituency that you have sworn to represent. Because then people come into that courtroom, they're just as much part of the constituency of the United States of America as anybody else. Let's, 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 let's. I, I don't mean to interrupt you, and I'm, and I'm not going to interrupt you often during your opening statement. I do want you to know that because of the way the video feed works, um, from where you're standing, uh, it's not picking you up. And uh, I assume that the audio is going to work through for the, for the district courtroom that's clipping it. Um, but it's. I'm content with all the state, the people okay. that are here that all right, reside gonna... on the land that most of us call Michigan. If that's who is bringing charges against me and there is no person injured, there's no property damage, there should be no case. So my statement is that how can I put myself in your jurisdiction 
except that you could do it by force and arrest me with four deputies with no due process and violate my unalienable rights to try to force me into your jurisdiction because your oath of office is a violation of section five United States code 3001. You do not have an oath giver. You have yourself that signed it and you have a notary. I just um, did an oath with the people here today and they signed it, I signed it and we got a couple of them notarized. That's how it should be. This is not a valid oath. I cannot stand in this court and be brought up because in fact, you are operating or masquerading as a lawful court, but you're in fraud of the very oath that would give your court legitimacy. I have a remedy, Your Honor. I have an oath here. And if you would like to take it in the presence of the people and sign and notarize, we can move forward. Otherwise, I would be violating my very own oath of office and an oath I just took downstairs as well um, to the United States of America's Constitution. This was very beautifully and ex uh, and and eloquently executed by this woman. The things that she said, um, the energy behind it is why I decided to do a review of this video because she's steeped in the truth. She loves our country, and she's making a statement that reverberates with patriots who know the truth everywhere in the United States of America. She's standing up for all of us. So there's no way that I can disrespect her. What I'm gonna attempt to do is try to help her a little bit. This is a contempt proceeding, by the way. In Revelations 2.9, it tells you about contempt. To be faithful, he said, he said they will cast some of you into prison even for 10 days. But be faithful unto death, and I shall give you the crown of life. You're going to be tested when you go into these courtrooms. That's the ultimate test. When they start testing you with your freedom, when they start trying to take away your freedom, they testing you for real. And they gambling. Because when you take away my freedom and you lose, it's very expensive. When you take away my freedom and you lose, it's very expensive, extremely expensive. It's, a, it's, it's expensive. You know that every second that you restrain one of your constituents freedom under false pretenses that you have to compensate them for that. Understand that I'm sure. Let's keep looking into this. Now, she's saying that she had an oath and she doesn't want to violate that oath, that she's a, she's a woman of the land. because She understands that we're dealing in an admiralty jurisdiction. The error that I see in your approach is the fact that anything you say can and will be used against you. This is why you always use every approach asking questions. He doesn't want to answer questions because he already knows not to answer questions. You're going to see that in this video. You need to be aware of that, that they don't want to answer questions and you got to learn a technique in order to force them to answer questions. Because all they're showing you is that they're watching our videos and they sent this video to let, them, let us know that we're prepared for you. Which is okay with me, we can play chess. Okay, you prepared for the old approach. Okay, we got some people out there that are going to create a new approach. You ain't gonna be ready for that. You're not gonna be ready for that. Especially after I point out to all the people the holes in your shit. Let's look at it.
All right, does that conclude your opening remarks? Well, it concludes the fact that I see that you're not interested or care what the people and the truth of the lawful process of the people. I don't know if anybody else cares to say that. I, there's no injury and there's no property damage. I do believe I withheld Mr. Gilbert from some money he was probably banking on that day. And I believe the court operates in commerce and is here to make a profit on all of their activities. So that is my violation. The state of Michigan would love, hated that I blocked an attorney before. I got to stop right here because she said something that was of concern. She says, I believe the court is operating in commerce. Okay, well, we can't operate our beliefs, ma'am. All right, the court is a place where factual evidence is submitted. This is the reason why you question the court. Jan, is this civil or criminal? This is a criminal action. Thank you. Let the record reflect that the action being brought against the defendant is a criminal action. Now, sir, I have another question for you. The Constitution of the United States of America only grants this court two criminal jurisdictions. One is under the common law. The other constitutes a condition of contract to the criminal aspects of a colorable admiralty jurisdiction. And sir, would you please tell me and this court for the record, under which two of these criminal jurisdictions are you trying this criminal action? Because in order for me to effectively mount a defense, I need to know that information because the rules of criminal procedure under an admiralty jurisdiction are different from the rules of criminal procedure under a, a common law jurisdiction, sir. And I don't think you'd be violating your oath if you gave me that information because the Constitution obviously grants you the power to do that. It's the Sixth Amendment. You swore oath to it. So please tell me in my court under which two of these jurisdictions are trying this criminal action. I'm not seeking legal advice. What I'm attempting to know is your legal intent. Now, the Constitution for the United States of America grants me the right to know the nature and cause of any action, and it grants and makes it incumbent upon you the duty to tell me. So please tell me the nature of this action. See, we don't want to reach a conclusion. You see, you're operating off of a, a preconceived notion that, oh, yeah, y'all not legitimate courts. Well, we haven't established that in the court by asking them what jurisdiction you're operating off of. A lot of people make this mistake. They come into court with a preconceived notion operating off of a presumption that hasn't been turned into a fact. A fact is something that is an agreement of parties. And agreements are either through silence or through express agreement. You know, it comes, the agreements come in many different forms. So this is what we at least have to allow an opportunity to occur instead of just reaching conclusions that, oh, this is an admiralty court. Uh, they're operating, you know, uh, this is all about commerce. There has to be some sort of contract. This is an individual that is energetic and enthusiastic, but she hasn't quite, you know, nailed down an understanding of the information. But she, she, she knows it. She doesn't know how to present it correctly. She don't know the rules. Of, she don't know how to operate in court. She hasn't taken the time to learn how to present evidence in court or how to speak in court. But she understands what's going on. And, she, and she, she's just, she just smashing them in the face with it, you know, which I don't have a problem with that because sometimes they do need to be slapped around like that by the people and everything. Let Look, man, you ain't legitimate. You operating as an administrator up there on that bench. You all this pomp and everything, this attitude that you got. You an administrator, you're not no real judicial officer. You're an employee of the legislative branch of government. You're enforcing statutes. So that means you're operating in a ministerial capacity. This is what we see. That's what, why, why we say it's false authority that you're trying to ex ex exercise some sort of presumptive authority over the people based off the fact that they have some sort of status of some sort of beneficiary or some sort of, uh, or some sort of welfare recipient. That's why you treat people the way that you do. Which you can because the people are ignorant because if they were knowledgeable, you wouldn't dare do that shit.
Maritime is the law. Maritime deals with contracts. Maritime deals with the subject matter. And when we say maritime admiralty, we're talking about colorable. Look up the word colorable, everyone, because they like to they like to lock in on the word admiralty because it's the law of the sea. When they've never studied admiralty, so they don't know what the fuck it is. They just looked up the definition. When you study admiralty, we understand that it's about the subject matter, which is commerce. Ninety percent of commerce goes over the sea. Ten percent goes over the land. It extends to both. So when they start talking about colorable admiralty, it means the legislature has picked up that jurisdiction from Article 3, and now they're utilizing it in a colorable fashion, which means it's not exactly admiralty, but it looks like admiralty. That's where you're making your mistake. When I ask the question, I say colorable admiralty, but you don't seem to have, you're not swift enough to upstairs to catch the fact that I said colorable. You just ignore that and just concentrate on the word admiralty. When I modified it, this is what I mean when I say some of you niggas went to high school, but you're not as intelligent as you think that you are. We're talking about a colorable admiralty jurisdiction. So what does that mean? It means you need to look up the word colorable and become intimately acquainted with that word. Somebody has asked me a good question. I'm going to ask it. He says, common law, case law is common law is the law of the land. Common law is unwritten law. That's the definition of it. Common law is a body of principles that do not receive um, any type of manifestation till a body of facts have appeared in a case and the judges have to utilize those principles to adjudicate the matter. And the result of that is what you call case law or judge made law. So that's why they call common law is judge-made law. I hope that answers your question. Team Elite, they won't release the oath of office to the tattoo case, New Jersey. All you have to do is go to the Secretary of State. If, it's a, if it is any state judge, all their oaths of offices are with the Secretary of State. Don't go down in them court, county courthouses fucking with them people. They all riding together down there. Under the Constitution, Article 3, Section 2, there is only two criminal jurisdictions. That's exactly right. Common law. And admiralty. Admiralty has a, a criminal aspect to it, but it's civil in nature. It used to be civil. That's where debtor's prisons came from. That's where debtor's prisons came from. And the court eyes without activating the live birth certificate and rescinding the social security number. We have, in fact, one legal right to live in the land. They have complete jurisdiction. No, they don't have complete jurisdiction. And you don't have... You have more rights. You talking about legal rights. We're not talking about legal rights. We're talking about fundamental rights. We're talking about God-given rights. Why are you forgetting your fundamental rights? Fundamental rights, they're unalienable, uh, unalienable. You can't give them away even if you wanted to. But you need to know what they are so you can assert them when the time presents itself. I appreciate that, Big L199, Team Elite, the 9 to the 9th power of 9. I appreciate that, Doc. All right, what we got? See what we have. What's that? What we have under the Constitution article? Okay, yeah, I, I answered that. Common law is the law of the land. It is natural law. It's principles. You got to understand. All law is based off of principles of law. You can't have a law without a principle. A principle is something that doesn't change. Something that is immutable. That's what law means. Law is supposed to mean something that doesn't change. So that's how you know when a law changes. It's not real law. It's some sort of policy or something like that. But real law never changes because principles are immutable. So all law has to be off of God's law because God is the only true judge. Another man, another peer of yours can't judge you. He's not in the position to judge you unless he has been uh, given that authority by a higher power. So they, they laws have to be in accordance with uh, natural law principles. Let me say it like that. I'm a, it's not God's law. It's, not, it's really natural law principles, not any arbitrary or capricious type of belief in a, in a religious doctrine. 
it's a natural law. These guys are all Masons, Rosicrucians, and shit like that. Don't ever forget that. These guys, these guys are not religious people. They are, they understand that religion is supposed to be a doorway into the correct disciplines, which is an understanding of natural law principles, which is the only evidence of God, is natural law. The only evidence that there is a higher intelligence, however you want to perceive him to be. They won't release the, okay, so let's see what we got there. Big L, I appreciate that. Let's see what else we got. Um, who needs validation? Okay, who needs validations from others to feel like he's right? Let me answer that because I had somebody else talking about that. Okay, well, you can feel however you want to, but the, word that, the world doesn't operate off feelings. Feelings is feminine. The feminine is subject, subject to the masculine. The feminine is subject to the masculine. The masculine directs the feminine. The, the, the feminine receives impressions from the masculine. That's how manifestation occurs. So I'm not operating off our feelings. As a man, we operate off of what, what is called, you know, right reasoning, right intellect. We channel our, we channel our, uh, our, our information through reason and intellect, not through our feelings. We leave that to women to do. So you can feel any way you want to. That's why they say natural laws are not a respect of persons because natural laws don't give a fuck what you think about. So if your premise or however you feel is not based off of a natural law principle, then it is just your opinion and it's, it's a bad opinion at that. And a matter of fact, everybody should just discount it because it has no type of efficacy as it relates to anything in reality whatsoever. In other words, you're delusional. Are you, have you done the webinar yet on administrative process? I've been doing the webinars. You need to catch up. Let's get back to the video. Before Seth was arraigned, you cannot be bringing me in, in the, in the hallway downstairs and charging me and then tell me that you're the true judge of the 53rd circuit court when your oath is not properly even administered. I happen to know, I believe, did you take a bar association oath? I'm not answering questions. Are you done with your opening statement? Okay, Judge, if you're watching, that was telling. I'm not answering any questions. You're not? This is one of the examples of railroading. This leads into railroading. When you start asking him a question and he refuses to answer. That right there, that was a gut check. That let me know she, she two-pieced his ass just saying, ha! She came out the corner. He had, she had him in the corner, then he, he, she two-pieced him out the corner. He, he, all, he on his jaw right now. I ain't asking any questions. <laughs> he on his jaw, you know. God damn, she two-pieced me and shit. I'm not answering any questions. Let's look at this. Let's look at what else. This is right here good. It'd be funny when you know what's going on. They hilarious. How they try to duck and drop, dive and try to, you know, that's what you study. Like, let me watch this motherfucker. Out. He going to slither out of this shit. You know, that's what you got to watch. That's how you pick up on the things that they do. They be in their lab coming up with shit too. We're not the only people in the lab. It's a chess game. We in the lab, we coming up with an approach. They in the lab, they doing the same thing. Damn, these niggas coming in there asking us what jurisdiction we operating under. How we gonna fuck them up on this shit? <laughs> and they come up with some bullshit. It has to be bullshit because it's not rooted in the truth. That's why they gonna always look crazy to a person who knows the truth. I guess I don't really need to be here because this is not a legitimate court that I should be standing in. And I will not violate my own oath 
by submitting myself to an authority that has not done the proper oath himself. All right, Ms. Tate, Ms. Miller, your uh, first witness. Thank you, Your Honor. If you call. Ms. Richmond, you may not leave the courtroom. I know you have people that need to know that they are violating people's unalienable rights by picking them off, off the street without a single piece of paperwork. Okay, Ms. Miller, who's your first witness? Does anybody else have a problem with this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, hang on. There's going to be no outbursts in the courtroom, or you'll have to be removed. All right, Mr. Bird, please raise your right hand. You may not leave the courtroom. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so then? Yes. Okay. I'd be happy to administer a legitimate. Ms. Richmond, case. hang on. So the court process works. I gave you both a chance for your opening statements. This is not. I had to take this time to respond to somebody in the chat who says so much for the truth setting you free. Well, the first thing that's John 8 32 and it does not say, and it has never said the truth will set you free. What it says is, is the truth will make you free. Okay. When you are made free. Okay. The truth always makes you free. I, right, because you're released of the burden of the lie. Lie, living under lies is a burden. Those people who are in the public who are living under lies, they're living under a burden. It's a burden to maintain a lie. It's an imprisonment. So you made free. It don't say nothing about set you free. I can submit to. Hold on. The process is going to be. I know you like to look to. really regal up there and you know, maintain a degree of authority, Ms. and you Richmond, have guys carrying guns. Ms. Richmond. I'm fully aware of that. Ms. Where Richmond, are their I body can, cams and their vehicle cams? I can put you in the jail cell. You can watch it from there. I know that's what you're hoping to do. Now, right, I like this right here because she kind of demonstrating some of her we the people authority. You know, I know you look real regal up there. I've done that myself. I tell them, you know, like that's a pretend authority that you operating up there under the bench. First of all, all are equal under the law. OK, you're not in any position where you have any type of position as it relates to the law versus anyone else. Your ass can go to prison just like anybody else can go to prison. First and foremost, you are a referee. You are supposed to be an unbiased arbiter and a dispute between two opposing parties. I have a constitutional of the United States of America that protects my right to know the nature of this jurisdiction because the founding fathers had enough foresight that you would come, y'all would start pulling this bullshit because you pulled it before. This ain't the first time in history you didn't pull this. That's why they put that clause in the Constitution to protect us from that bullshit that was going on in England. So Ms. Miller is going to be given an opportunity to question the witness, and then you'll be given an opportunity to question the witnesses. That's how court procedure operates. If you interfere with that procedure, you're going to be in direct contempt of court. Ms. Miller, proceed with your question. I would have to be. Can you state your name for the record? I'm David Burke. Okay, now what he's keeping her in, he's keeping her under procedural law. This is how they defeat all of you because they stay within the procedures. That's what they went to college for, to learn the procedures. That's the up that they got on you. I, everything is procedural when you're dealing with these courts. And they try to stay with that. Now, they dishonor the procedure of due process because that's why an abatement becomes necessary because you jump over certain steps in establishing the jurisdiction of the court, especially when it's been questioned, because I can question or challenge the subject matter jurisdiction of the court at any time during the proceeding. OK, so you need you have to honor that. So you look dishonorable when we come in and we say those things and then you won't don't want to grant that you look dishonorable. You look like a traitor to the people. 
because you're, tra you're betraying the Constitution, the document that you swore to uphold. You swore to uphold that document. And you don't think that there is any type of, you don't think that there is any punishment for, for violating that oath. That's what it is, because you want to get money. You want to get money. You didn't sell your soul for the money. Let me tell you something. That right there diminishes you. And, and you know, if you're the type of person that just gives yourself over for money, even if you're a woman, you know, just all you care about is money, or you're a man, all you care about is money. You're the worst of all. You're the miserable, most miserable of all souls. Because a true God, a goddess understands that the man makes the money, the money don't make the man. And what that means is that we have an inherent power in us to attract to us what we need. And a person who understands his power don't trip over it. He just exercises it whenever he needs to. It ain't no big deal. Everybody possesses it. Why would you sell your soul? Like it talks about in Matthew chapter 24. It said, when the creator of the boundless universe, when you look at the birds and the trees and the flowers and he provides for them, will he not provide for you just as equally, O oh, you of little faith? You have to run and do something, you know, underhanded or sell your soul in something just to acquire what you think is pleasure. And you have to live out the rest of your lives in the back of your mind with that cloud hanging over your head, knowing what you did to get where you're at when you didn't do it honorably. I appreciate that. Brother, I was logged into the webinar last night at 12 a.m. and never opened up. Well, what? We didn't have a webinar last night. I'll have one tomorrow. It's going to be a webinar tomorrow. It ain't going to be one last night. Compromising your principles is considered being a whore. Yeah. I can get with that. I can get with that. Some of these people trolling you do not deserve your energy, not even a response. Prop. Yeah, I'm not addressing, you know, I'm, I, you know I, I address them though because you got to understand the, the opposition, the word Satan means adversary. That's what it means. It means adversary, shaitan. So there's going to be an adversary that's going to come, but you can't measure your strength unless you have an adversary. So they're just doing their job of helping me measure my strength. That's all that they're doing. They're just doing their job. Let them do their job. You don't have to worry about it. They know they devils. Devils know that they devils. They have chosen that, that course of action purposely. All right, so you don't have to get in. Just like a hoe, like a prostitute. You can't make a prostitute feel bad. She knows she a whore. You can't say, you whore, you ain't making her feel bad. Look, nigga, I know that. I chose this. So when you're looking at whores, like people who whore themselves out, or people who whore themselves out for money and things like that, you ain't going to make them feel bad calling them a whore. They know they a whore. They the whores of Babylon. Y'all think that's just talk in these scriptures and everything. That's not just talk. You're looking at the empirical evidence right before your eyes. Let's look and see if we gonna get justice today. Or if it's just some sovereign citizen shit, you know. And can you spell your last name? B-E-R-G. And how are you employed? I'm the IT director for Sporting County. And in that capacity, um, are you able to see and access the surveillance footage in the building? Yes, I am. And are you able to um, pull portions of that video off the server? I am. And um, were you working that capacity on uh, November 30th, 2023? Yes. And are you um, aware of uh, security footage that was pulled from the system for that date? Yes, I am. Do you know what um, the time frame of that security footage that was pulled was? Uh, no, the eight to 10. And do you know what part of the building was um, pulled from the system for that time frame? I believe there were about five camera views, uh, mainly downstairs in front of district court in the, in the uh, entryway. Okay. And did you review this um, thumb drive prior to sitting here to testify today? Yes, I did. 
And is everything on this thumb drive, was that pulled from the system from November 30th? May? Objection, this is all hearsay. Anything that is on that video is all hearsay. Uh, it hasn't been offered into evidence yet, so hold on a second. So you're able Okay, that little exchange is so, it's so much to unpack right there. First of all, they have pulled her into the, the, the area that is their, is their superior domain, which is like a trial, which they start arguing facts, an argument, which is what you want to stay away from. This is, what, this is the railroading aspect to it. They railroad you into the trial or something like that when you don't want to go to trial. That's why you have to keep saying over the, on the record, I, you know, I'm not disputing any facts in the charging instrument. There's no, there's no issue of fact. There's no material issue of fact. Keep saying that to them and put it on the record. They can't take you to trial if you're saying that. Because trial is to resolve arguments over facts. But if there's no argument, we're not arguing facts. What I'm trying to determine is the jurisdiction of the court. Say, sir, Anna, I'm not arguing any facts as it relates to this case. You have a plea called a confession and avoidance. It is a common law a plea. Where you can confess to something but avoid the consequence of it by a, in introducing additional facts. The facts that you are introducing is that there isn't any money. This is civil in nature. Let's go for settlement and closure, the accounting on this. But you're gonna see when you know what's going on, you're gonna see that how they are in a hurry to take you into an argument, just like in Alice in Wonderland. So let's go, let's go to trial. Trial is not our area. Arguments are not our area. We're not here to argue facts. That's what attorneys do. Why are you gonna argue facts in a jurisdiction that's not you're not subjected to? Why you wanna go into La La Land? the land of corporate fictions and argue shit. But she, she fought well though. I'm not gonna try to diminish this lady because I'm, I'm showing you how they will try to run over you is what I'm trying to say. Because this lady, she had a lot of energy, a lot of spirit. She's spitting a lot of truth. She put a flamethrower on their ass now. She, she Godzilla straight up on it. <sighs> she blowing goddamn. <laughs> She's spitting lava. She's spitting on the ass. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna discount what she's doing. She hitting the ass with a flamethrower. She let loose on them. It's just that the people watching don't understand. They think she's crazy. That's why God sent me. That's why God sent me to show you that they not crazy. That's my job. Let's keep going. Able to view everything on the thumb drive? Yes. And um, was that all footage from those cameras from November 30th? Here's that. Yes, it hasn't been offered into evidence yet. And <clears throat> no, I know your presumptions are that if it's set in court and it's not objected, it becomes presumptive evidence. All he said is that he re I'm glad this part came back up because this is something else I got to talk about. She kept objecting and he didn't answer the objection was sustained or overruled. He kept saying that, oh, you haven't entered and introduced it into evidence yet. That's called an equivocal ruling. An equivocal ruling means that they have not committed to either sustained or overruled. So anytime they don't say sustained, when I say objection, all you want to hear is sustained or overruled. If they don't say that, then you say this. I take exception to the honorable judge refusing to rule on my objection. Would you please enter sustained or overruled into the record so I can preserve the error? Okay, because this error, I know to you to allow uh, hearsay evidence into the record over my objection. Let's take it to the appellate court and let them review it.
reviewed it. So continue. And did it appear to be um, she was edited in this. any way? I'm sorry, what's that? Did it appear to be edited in any way? No, it's software that we have to find allow us to edit. So it's the full um, capture of that yes. time frame? Yes. Okay, I'd move to admit People's Exhibit 1. Okay, you said that one has been offered for admission. Ms. Bridgman, do you have an objection? I have an objection that anything in the hallway is going to be considered contempt of court. Okay, it is. Uh, I'm going to presume that that's an objection as to relevance. It is relevant. Uh, objection over the one submitted. Thank you. So, sure. my honor. Thank you. Okay. The notice right there, he ruled on that, that objection. I want y'all to pay attention. It went to relevance. It's not relevant to the proceeding. You could probably come back and say something. I don't know how it was relevant to the proceeding either. I, but whenever they say something that you know is relevant, you always have something like, I take exception. You say, I will conditionally accept the honorable judge's contention that this is not relevant upon proof of claim. You could provide me some sort of statutory authority that shows that it's not. You know, something like that. You know, just you don't just you don't just let them fly with it. You know, condition I accept it because they are they are what administrators. They are under a statutory authority. Everything they do has to be some sort of statute to sanction their actions. So call them up on that shit. Okay, where's the statute that says you can do X, Y, and Z, man? <laughs> where is it at right now? <laughs> Show me in the law that you can do what you just said that you you doing. Can we move to settle this? Because I know your main objective is to get me into jail unconstitutionally again. Mr. Richmond, I assure you that it's not my objective today. If it is your objective, there's easy ways that you can make that happen by continuing to behave the way that you are. But I assure you that it's not my intention today. All right, so one's in there. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the time frame on the video is two hours. Why is you asking me am I gonna go live tonight for discharging debt? Why your dumb ass ain't paying attention to what I'm talking about right here? Why you not paying attention to what I'm talking about right here? Why, why are you worried about discharging some motherfucking debt? Why aren't you paying attention what I'm talking about? Cause nigga, you gonna end up in court. Why you ain't paying attention to what I'm talking about right now? Y'all niggas make me sick with that discharge and dead shit. I ain't gonna lie. That's all you think about. That's all y'all motherfuckers think about. Niggas make money off of y'all with that shit. Y'all so thirsty. How can I get this car, buy this car? I'm gonna discard this house and shit like that. It's just thirsty for that shit. You ain't got no sense of, um, of decorum as it relates to approaching the information without demonstrating that you somehow have some sort of rapacious appetite for free shit. Rapacious is a word that I learned. Yeah, I use that word a lot now. I love it. It means greed. Okay, I'm only answering questions now that they super chat. All the regular questions don't get answered no more. The only questions that are answered now are super chat questions. All right, so you got a super chat. I'm not asking, so if you ask, if you ask me a dumb question, at least you're gonna pay for it. <laughs> you're gonna pay for it, all right? So ain't no more of those questions, let's go. Um, I don't think the court wants to, I don't want to show the full two hour video um, if I would be allowed to present um, various snippets of relevant time from the video. Okay, go ahead. All right, so Ms. Bridgman, Ms. Miller's going to play portions of the security footage for the court. I'm not sure if you're able to see it from where you are standing. Again, I invite you, you're welcome to sit at the table where you can see the footage. I was the there, Your Honor, and before the living God, I know what's on that video, and I have not violated or broken any laws. I have stood in the way of your commerce court, so I understand that that's a 
Ma'am, this is where they get you. They didn't pulled you into, you worried about what you did. What you did is not the issue. That's when they, that's the evidence that they got you right there. I, I didn't do nothing illegal or anything like that. That's when they start getting you. You know, they pulling you into the argument. They want you to argue the facts. And you don't want to argue any facts with these people. The, you have to be able to identify what is railroading. Railroading is when they purposely run over your due process rights. When I'm sitting here telling you that the nature and cause of the action, the Sixth Amendment protects my right to know that. Okay, telling me the cause of action, the charges are the cause of action. Violation of a statute is a cause of action. The nature of the action is what I'm trying to get to. Is it civil or criminal in, in nature? Come on, you know the question. You just told me about contempt. You talking about there's two types of contempt, civil and criminal. We're telling me there's something that's contempt is not telling me the nature of the contempt. Is the nature of the contempt civil or is the nature of the contempt cr criminal? Okay, well, telling me that I got charged with something is not telling me the nature of the charge. Is it a civil or criminal charge? And when you tell me criminal, well, I still need to qualify that further because there are different types of criminal charges. There are common law criminal charges and there are admiralty criminal charges. So now I need to get a distinction on that. How can me asking that question in any kind of way for anyone who's able to use deductive, reason, deductive reasoning, how can you be looked at, how can that be looked at as something that is crazy for me asking that question? That's a reasonable question. So anyone who thinks it's unreasonable, I have to question your intelligence or your alliances. I got to start looking at the person now. Okay, this motherfucker, he can't appeal to common sense. He has to be some sort of demon or something, or some sort of infiltrator, or some sort of person, some sort of agent of destruction that is aiming to destroy the foundation that, of which this country was built off of, which is common law principles, which is a belief in the creator of the boundless universe, a belief in God, a, a, moral, a moral position based off of religious interpretation of the creator. You're trying to destroy that. You're trying to undermine that. That's the only conclusion I can come to. Unless you can show me another line of deductive reasoning of how asking that question is not reasonable. And I've never seen anybody explain that to me, how that question is unreasonable. And how not answering that question cannot be interpreted as someone committing tra a tra a treason to the Constitution, if you're a public servant, who's sworn to uphold that Constitution. How is that not treason? You got to be nervous. You got to be nervous. How can you sleep at night knowing that if people wake up, you can get fucked up? the court charge because you were for-profit for court. Yeah. And for the record, my office did contact Ms. Bridgman to offer to give her a copy of the thresh flash drive or have put a, on a flash drive for her and she indicated that she did not want a copy. Okay, go ahead and say. And about how long is this footage? Um, the various clips that I show will be approximately five minutes. Okay. I'm here. I'm just standing out of the way. Now, Your Honor, before you call the next witness, I would love to be in honor in your courtroom. And I would ask that we would settle to save this young man. We're in the middle of it here. Mr. Oh. Flores, would you please raise your right hand? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so again? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you state your name for the record? Uh, Seth.
This is what I find interesting. They try to take God out of everything. The courts are the the courts are the only thing that hold up the Federal Reserve system. Okay, so they sit here and make you swear in, so help you God. This is what they make you say, so help you God. But you see all through society, they're trying to take God out of everything. But when you come into these courts, they want you to swear to tell the truth, so help you God. God ain't supposed to be involved in it, are they? Because when we bring them up, you start obfuscating, jumping around, slithering like a snake. I find that interesting. So help you God. So help you God. And can you spell your last name? M O O R E S. Okay, thank you. And were you uh, present in this building on November 30th, 2023? Yes, I believe so. Why did you come to the building on that day? Uh, I had a court date for the arraignment. Okay, do you remember what time you showed up at the court? I think around 10, maybe. And when you um, came. This is the railroading aspect of it. They just went up, just ran over everything she was requesting and just went straight to a trial and start calling witnesses. A lot of you will experience this. This is something that you need to be prepared for. You're going, you're going to experience this until you show them that you are somebody that you don't be fucking with like this. This is disrespectful. This is disrespect. This is, I don't think you know what the fuck you're talking about. This is, I don't think you can do what you claim you can do to me. This is, based off what you said here today, I don't have shit to worry about from you. Let's run over the ass and keep it going. Fuck your request. into the building, what happened? Um, walked in, Beth approached me. Um, seemed like she, she wanted to help me. Uh, um, she told me I didn't need a lawyer. And uh, the judge suggested that I should talk to one. Okay, hold, can I stop you for a minute? Um, you said Beth approached you. Do you see Beth in the courtroom today? Yeah. Um, what's she wearing? Yeah, I could. I'd ask the court to, uh, for the record, to reflect that uh, Mr. Flores said identified as Bridgman. You know, the, uh, the district court is clerking it. They're telling me they're having a hard time hearing the witness, Mr. Flores. Can you speak up? But you have to use your outside voice. Yeah. Should I repeat the question? No, no, go ahead. Okay. And so before you walked into the building on the 30th, did you know um, Beth? No. You just yeah. met her on that day? Yeah. And um, when you went into the courtroom, did anyone go with you? No. You don't remember anyone being in the courtroom with you? Uh, they didn't walk in with me or... I guess I can clarify. Once you were in the building and then you went into the room where the judge is... Did okay, leading, leading the way this, come on. But that, that's just laying over the Yes, I've walked in the courtroom. <laughs> I thought you would have prepped them better than this page. Ms. Bridgman, that is not a proper objection. That's an that's an interjection that's disorderly. Don't do that. I, I know you're you're a, you're an adult human being, so you're capable of controlling yourself. So please do so. This is a, a format that has to be dignified and follow proper procedures and be ordered. Okay, you just you ordered. just made my case, Judge, because your oath is not properly in order. 
Mr. Flores, when you She keep on smacking him and shit. <laughs> He's right about the decorum of the case. You got to object, okay? You got to know how to form an objection. There is a document called Court Tricks and Traps by Valiant Liberty. It is the best. It's only four pages long. If you have a study group out there, study that because it tells you how to do objections and exceptions. It tells you the court, the tricks that courts use when you do an objection and how they allow evidence into the record that shouldn't be allowed into the record. So you got it. Let me tell you something. If you study this, this four page document, it's going to put you in there like your court game is going to go accelerate. It's going to go up some notches. The court game going to go up some notches. If you're a pro se litigant, improper persona, however you want to style yourself, you know, you learn that right there. I'm telling you, it's going to take you up a notch. It's going to take you up a notch to study that. Objections are a big thing. So, you know, we really don't want to get into an argument, though. We don't want to get into an argument. But if you find yourself into one, you know, you need to know how to navigate those waters, too. But you don't want you're not you're not trying to argue facts with these people. You're not arguing any facts. Let them have the facts. We're not here to establish facts. I, I'm here only for two things. I'm here for settlement and closure. And if you don't understand what I say, settlement and closure, my next thing is I'm going to determine what jurisdiction you're operating under. Because now I need to have a firm foundation of why you don't understand what I'm talking about. So now I have to ask you some questions. Don Preston, I appreciate the five bones. Wesley Davis, thank you for the 369, my brother. I appreciate that. Let's keep watching. So just to repeat, when you went into the room with the judge, I didn't go with you? Uh, I just go. Okay. And um, at some point when you're in the room, do you remember if that said anything to the judge? Uh, that I didn't need a lawyer. I didn't say that in the court. Hang on, you can't even miss. It's You're putting words in his mouth. You'll have an opportunity to ask questions, but you can't mm -hmm. interject her. Well, us. I have to object. Okay. And then um, at some point, did the judge tell you to do anything? Uh, speak to a lawyer. Okay. Did yeah. you ever speak objection. to a lawyer on that day? What's your objection? She's just leading. She's taking them through every step, which I can review. And um, she's telling him, you should have done this prior, Paige. You should have had him in here earlier and prepped him. She asked him a question, did this happen? And he said, yes, that's perfect. That's proper. leading. That no, she leading. should ask that's him what happened. happened. Do you recall what happened when you... You know, I'm having to stop so many times because I have to point out things. I don't know if that was an objection. If it was an objection, he didn't say sustained overruled. That is an obfuscate. Uh, that is a um, uh, a um, um, equivocal ruling or whatever. You know what I'm saying? He starts talking. Those are the things you have to watch out every time you say objection. You know, say objection leading and then say whatever it is that you're saying, you know. But you have to form an objection properly and then you have to wait for a proper response. Objections are what you get to take to the appellate court level. That's what you want the appellate court to review, your objections that you made. But if the appellate court is looking at the transcript and they can't, and the judge didn't commit on the record, there's an automatic presumption with the appellate court that the trial court did everything correctly. That is a standard presumption that the appellate courts are operating under, that the trial court, they're giving them that already the chips are stacked against you. So if you're going to make them look bad, then you need to make them look bad because they already, there's an operational presumption already in place when you go to the appellate level that they were right. You're making a record. You tried to, uh, or when an attorney approached you in the hallway? Um, I tried speaking to him and went like and speak to him. 
Do you remember who that lawyer was? Um, Gilbert. And were you ever able to talk to Gilbert about your arraignment? Only after. After what do you mean by only after? Like, uh, I don't think I did. Maybe like a couple of days or a week after. Okay, but not on the 30th. Did you no. ever talk to Mr. Gilbert? Not on that day, no. And did um, you ever give any paperwork back to the court that morning? Yes, I did. Did you write anything on that paper? Can we ask him what he did? Objection? She, she is. No, she's not. Um, <clears throat> not really sure what I wrote on the ticket. Um, something about it's my personal vehicle, or it wasn't my personal vehicle, and I wasn't driving. Why did you write that on your ticket? Um, that's a guess of me too. And does that mean anything to you what you wrote on the paper? Uh, not necessarily. <clears throat> okay, I think this whole proceeding is about the fact that she told him what to write on a traffic ticket. And you know, we have like Vi uh, VC or Coactus VC. Coactus VC is that you have forced me to do and you can write that on a traffic ticket. And what it is, is it's saying you can't enter into a contract if you were forced to enter into the contract, which is essentially what is happening because the officer is telling you if you don't sign the ticket, they're gonna take you to jail. So you've been forced into the contract. I don't wanna sign this traffic ticket. So they forced me into your jurisdiction and there's a presumption that I'm driving. And what is driving? That means that I'm operating a motor vehicle for profit and gain. I'm not operating a motor vehicle for profit and gain. I'm using it for my personal leisure. You presuming that I'm in operating a motor vehicle in the pursuit or the, or the prosecution of some sort of commercial activity. Driving, bus driver, taxi driver, Uber driver, bus driver, truck driver. These are people who utilize motor vehicles for profit and gain. Why do you continually, continuously act like the word driver is not associated with a commercial meaning? Why you wanna play this game when there's so much evidence in the transcripts of all these court proceedings to show you otherwise? I have to question your intelligence. Or you're just presuming that everybody out there is just too stupid to look it up and find it out for themselves. So you said that Beth suggested that you write that on your ticket? Yes. And um, what did you do with the ticket after you wrote on it? Uh, I think I turned it into the civil court desk. But you don't have it uh, as a transcriber. You have to keep all the notes yourself. Or is that what's going on? So Ash Bridge, but that's not a proper objection. Stop misbehaving. You know how to behave. Behave. I'm not sure I'm the only one in bad behavior, Your Honor. According to Article 2 or Article 3, Section 2, Court. Go ahead, Mr. You might be in bad behavior. Your Honor, may I Now she. Now she threw that in there and rightfully so because the question is, are we being subjected to judicial process or legislative process judge? You know, we have three branches of government. We have a legislative, executive and judicial branch of, gov of government. <clears throat> now, the private citizens in the Republic are, so are supposed to only be subjected to judicial process not legislative process. Legislative process 
is accommodates commercial processes or corporate or corporate matters because that's what you've been given jurisdiction and authority over. All right, so when we look at um, the all caps name that you are going to tell any person that it means nothing, even though your name is in all caps on your driver's license, your name is in all caps on your bank statement, your name is in all caps on your birth certificate, your name is in all caps on the caption of the pleading of all paperwork that you get from the court, utility bills, everything in the public, my name is styled in all caps. And you will tell me that it means nothing, that that's you. But when I do the research, I see that you are only engaged in dealing and accommodating commercial entities. So did you put my name in all caps? to incorporate it in some kind of way when we know that slave ships used to be in all caps, the names on the ships and everything to show that they are a legal fiction entity. And we know that a legal fiction is an assumption that something is true, even though it may be untrue, made especially in judicial reasoning to alter how legal rule operates. All corporations are legal fiction, illegal fiction entities. We have to assume that it's true, even though it's some sort of construct of the mind, it's some sort of phantasmagoria of the imagination. Really? This is childish. I hate that I have to spend time even reviewing this bullshit. I have to tell you. <laughs> I hate that I got to review this bullshit. It's a waste of time. I could be using my mental prowess on something else instead of this infantile bullshit that you're doing in these courts. Thank you, Gary. Gosh. Let's look and see what they're doing. Is that a copy of your ticket? Is that your handwriting on it? That, is that what you turned into the court? I believe so. Your Honor, I, I guess I would ask the court to take judicial notice of the ticket. I believe it's in the court's file already on what Mr. Flores turned into the district window on November 30th. Okay. Yeah, it is or not, but uh, I'll, I'll so take judicial notice of the court's own records. Do you have it marked as an exhibit? I do. What number is it? It's exhibit two. Exhibit two will be admitted. Thank you. And then after you gave your ticket to the window, what did you do next? Um, I was advised to leave. Who advised you to leave? So, um, at that point, did you leave? Yeah. At any point in that morning, did you um, address the court on your ticket? No, I did not. And after you initially were told to meet with, with an attorney, did you ever go back into the courtroom? Uh, I think about a week later. Okay, but that day, did you ever go back? No. And following um, your... Following them in the court room, what did you do after that? Um, just went out and got some, some lunch. Okay, who did you do that with? Uh, I have to take time to acknowledge someone in the chat, Lee Rice the second. He says it's all, it says definitely all a play. Been in there, sandbox. Won some, lost some. Knowing what I know now, I would avoid it altogether. Use of much love and peace, my brother. See, when somebody make a comment like that, I know they, I, I can feel them. You know, because you don't, you don't say, "Well, I won every time I went in court." 
It's like, nah, you you dealing with different type of individuals. You're dealing with individuals that run over you. You deal you got to measure and weigh, is it worth the effort, you know, to go through all of this with these people? Sometimes you can just say, look, I just want to get the fuck up out of here. I don't even feel like dealing with this bullshit today. This is a minor, this is something minor. I'm not even gonna expend any energy on it like that. Here, how much is this shit? $150? Aaron, take this shit, get the fuck on. Take this shit and get on. <laughs> you know, sometimes you're gonna be like that. That's just being real. You don't feel like doing this shit every time, going through this shit every time, but sometimes it's worth it. You're like, okay, I gotta show these motherfuckers, you know, they're being ultimately disrespectful now. <laughs> so I gotta pull out these guns on their ass. <laughs> 1999, Lee Rice II, I appreciate the bones, Doc. But I, hey, when somebody make a statement, I feel you, Doc, I feel you, brother. You went in them courtrooms. I know what it is, you know? Let's get back. Let's see what's happening. Do you remember where that was? I'm um, not really sure. Let me maybe. Okay. And then, um, did, did. Sorry, Mr. Flores, you're really going to have to use your outside voice. That's good. <laughs> okay. And while you were at lunch, did uh, Ms. Bertrand ever give you any money? No. Oh, for, uh, my phone, yes. So did she give you any money? Yeah. How much money did she give you? $60. And what was that $60 in cash? Yes. And that occurred after the same day as the court uh, arraignment in the morning? I believe so. Uh, from Subway to uh, Butler Road. Incrimination. Okay. So, so I'm, not gonna, I'm not going okay. to do that. Um, you had just gotten off work, is that right? No. How long had you been off work? Um, probably a couple hours. I got off around 8. And it was what time were you picked up? Again, I guess, you know, I will go back and sustain the earlier objection. What happened during the traffic stop with Mr. Flores is not relevant to the question of whether you. Oh, okay, as you can see, she has fallen further into the trap of participating in a public controversy. When you go and look up the definition of public law. It is, it is a public figure, anyone who voluntarily participates in a public controversy. One of the rules is do not participate in public plays. They will pull you down that rabbit hole into their play. And then you start participating into it, asking the witness questions. This is why I'm always talking about creditors and their bonds, because it warns you against that and it shows you how to avoid that. You got to avoid that. Look, I'm going to do a part two of this because uh, this is a long video, so I'm not I'm not going to go deep into it. I'm going to do a part two tomorrow. But right now, I'm going to take some time to field some questions. Questions only Super Chat get answered first, and then the other type of donations and so forth. Those are the questions that get answered. Donations get answered, all right? So let's get into it. I appreciate that, Anton. Yeah. You said, what do you think about the idea of creating a society? Those who know and those who don't know, we already got a society like that. I appreciate that, Isaac L. I appreciate that. We already got a society of those who know and those who don't know. We already got that. You know, it's already, it's already that. Hollywood Four, thank you for everything you said. Please, Ramadan is coming fast with me, brother. Okay, I'll do that. Ramadan, sun up to sun down. I got you. I got you. The judge is in her Facebook group. He should have recused himself. Never been there. I don't want to go. I filed a land patent in November and told them not to send me any more tax bills. Haven't heard anything. Well, you know, I think you should try to get some sort of declaratory judgment on that instead of just letting it languish. 
because they will just sit back and just wait. Yeah, I'm telling you, they, they will wait. So you need to execute on getting a finality to that. And one of the ways of doing that is trying to get into an equity court, get some sort of, um, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, declaratory judgment or something like that, and then go for some sort of, you know, of some sort of, uh, you know, clear title to land. You want if you never have to go to court. Yeah, you do. They're, they're, those instances happen too. They do. And let's see what else we got over here. I don't use SSM for nothing. What happens when you are injured party and have a claim against them? Well, then you do a counterclaim. Know what a counterclaim is. All right, y'all, look, I'm out. I'm going off. Um, I want to appreciate everybody. I'm going to do another part to this tomorrow. Um, I want you to just kind of soak in and marinate on all the things that I showed you today and kind of, you know, contemplate and then investigate some of the things that I'm saying too. Some of the, the paperwork I told you to read, like Court Trips, Tricks and Traps by Valiant Liberty, that is a very important document to read. Don't worry about it. it's based off Texas law. It, the same principle applies in all 50 states. You know, he's just in Texas, so he's, he's talking from a Texas perspective, but that doesn't mean anything. But I wanted to ask you about the word deposit and how they take your note and change and change it to cash when they loan it back to you. Well, I'm not going to do that right now, you know, but a deposit is 1813 L N. I can't remember the exact statutory quote that goes into what a deposit is. Um, but they change it. They change it. They just do. They just change it in different forms. Like when you deposit something and then you take it out of out of the bank with a like a debit card or a credit card or something like that. You know, it's it's money changing. They just changing it from one form to the next. If you're talking about a note when you deposit it on a on a mortgage, I think that's what you're asking me. And that goes into the UCC of whether they can construe it as a note or a, you know, or a, you know. Or something like that. So you know, it's it's they convert it into a, a into into a form of payment, and that's why you'll see that they'll have paid to the order on them. I'll get into that on the next on, on when we when, tomorrow. I'll go into a little bit more deeper into it and talk about that. Peace and love to the gods. Peace. All right, y'all. I'm out. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Peace to the gods. Like, comment, and subscribe. And like I said, don't believe nothing I say. Check it out for yourself. Don't believe nothing I say. Nothing. Mild peace.